Now, the outline of um, this, from what I can see, two-part session would be part one tonight, well, to know the importance of, well, knowing God's will, and then our obligations to do God's will. And the question is this, some people think that, can a Christian wonder if can a Christian truly know God's will? Can we know God's will? And what is and what is not finding God's will, and what is God's will? We keep saying God's will. I want to know God's will. But really, what is God's will in the Scriptures? And now, what about things like are open and closed doors considered God's will? All right, some of these things, God willing, we will cover tonight. Now, there is a wise saying, all right? Richard Baxter wrote this, Now, till you can rest in God's will, you will never have rest. It is very true. Until the Christian rests in God's will, you will find your life to be in turmoil, sadness, confusion, unhappiness, unrest. Now, the importance of knowing God's will. Why the study of this topic? Well, recently there have been quite a few questions submitted for Teens Q&A that is related to this topic. Pastor, can you tell us from scriptures, you know, how can I find God's will in this, in that? How do I know if this is God's will? And also, over time, there are some people who sought counselling to well, find out what they're going through, um, whether it is God's will or whether they've made a decision that is out of God's will, all right? So some of these things uh, made me think, well, I think it is an important time to study this topic from Scriptures. Moreover, more and more of you are, um, well, the young people, some of you are finishing your school, um, moving to university, some to coming out to work, and some, well, um, enter, have just entered into family life and have children at a young stage. Well, how do we find God's will at all these stages of life? So I think it is a phase where many of you are faced, um, um, faced with this, this question. How do I know God's will? Well, first and foremost, do you want to know God's will? Well, do you think knowing God's will is important? The Christian must realize that we cannot go through life just, well, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. It is important for the Christian um, to know God's will. Knowing God's will is important. Why? Because we make decisions every day. Now, some with the application of God's precepts. So some of us, as we make decisions in our daily lives, we are conscious to apply God's word, God's principles. But very often, many of us, we neglect God's principles. We don't even seem to bring God into the picture for a few reasons, all right? For a few reasons, the next point, well, we don't even consider what God's will is. It doesn't seem to, to occur to us that, well, you know, even in this matter, is, is what everybody goes through, what everybody does at this stage of life, well, I just go ahead and do the same thing. We don't seem to consider well, is this thing God's will for me? For me? Yes, it may be for someone else. It may not be a sinful thing. But we don't stop to ask, or rather I would say, God don't seem to be in the equation of many decisions that we make in life. Because they are so common. Everybody does it. My parents made this decision, so I make this decision. My friends make this decision, so I make this decision in choosing this cause or another cause. Well, if you're honest, we have to say it is true. It is true. In many of our decisions, we have been like that. Now, our, or, well, due to our misunderstanding of God's will, do you know exactly what you mean when you say, I am seeking God's will? I am in God's will. What do you mean by that? With a wrong understanding of God's will, which we'll see some of it afterwards. Now, we can think that we are seeking God's will. And we may even sincerely think that we are seeking God's will, well, on this matter for my child, for my spouse, for my singlehood, for my old age, but we may not be. Because of a failure to understand the biblical meaning of God's will, 
Well, of course, then there is this other reason. We outright reject God's will. Hmm? This is what I want to do. I, I don't care what God, whether God wants this to be His will for my life or not. I do not care. Or you know that it is not God's will and you just want to go ahead with your will. Right? So knowing God's will um, is something that is crucial for the believer to be conscious about. Why? Because some major decisions can affect our Christian life, ministry, and sometimes even our usefulness for the Lord. Some choices may even change our lives permanently. Some choices are irreversible, Christians. So don't take going through your daily life, going through your monthly, weekly, and different phases of your life lightly to say, well, I just go ahead and do this thing. Well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Very terrible things can happen. Irreversible things can happen for you, for yourself personally, for your family, for the church. Now, one of the things that we have to realize about knowing God's will, it is important because it is the way to please God. The Christian always feels, I want to please God, I want to please God. But you have to realize that knowing His will and then following His will is a crucial part of pleasing God. So we cannot go through our life without giving serious thoughts about this constantly. Revelations 4, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for Thou hast created all things, including us. And for Thy pleasure, they are and were created. So the believer walking in God's will is part of God's plan. That is why He created that us and it is for his pleasure doing his pleasure in other words doing his will so the christian must come to um, link this to the chief end of man is to glorify god we keep saying that but part of glorifying god is well to bring him pleasure and that is to do his will now just because you can do something does not mean it is god's will and will glorify god why must I emphasize this? Knowing God's, God's will is very crucial because the problem with us sometimes is we can do many things. I can choose this. I can go ahead with this. I can choose that for my child. I can do this in my family. I can choose this as a single. There are many things that we have the capability, even the finances to do. But just because we have that, it does not mean it is God's will. Please remember this. Students, you are going to choose a course of studies. You are here tonight. You have to understand, well, just because I am clever, I have the brains to do this course, then I should do it. Just because it is popular, just because it is um, um, what my parents feel I should do, well, just because you can, doesn't mean it is God's will. You have to apply God's will to find God's will, which we will see. Or even adults, just because you can afford to buy something, don't think, because I can afford, right, so it must be God's will. Just because you can make certain decisions for your child and be able to support your child in that decision, doesn't mean it is God's will. Does this particular choice truly bring pleasure to God? When it is not God's will, well, just because you can do it and you end up doing it very well, you may bring pleasure to many people, your parents, yourself, your child, but it does not mean it is God's will. Now, this is one of the key reasons why I felt it is important at this stage to cover this, because many of us have the ability, abilities um, um, finances, um, wisdom, so to speak, to do some things. But it doesn't mean it is God's will. Now, even sometimes as you go through life, something comes your way and you say, well, I have this thing. So does it mean that, well, God gave it to me and therefore I can use this, but when you're using it, it's for a sinful purpose or is, is to do something sinful. And they say, but since God gave it to me, therefore it must be God's will. 
You see, that is our problem. Just because we receive something, we have something, we are able to do something, we assume it is God's will. And then we go ahead and do it. Now, we can do otherwise. Please remember that in 1 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. Now, God says that, well, I'll read the second part, let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are, on, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth and some of honour, and some to honour and some to dishonour. Now, what is this about? In God's kingdom, in God's house, now, we can choose to be silver or gold. It means useful, useful or wood and of the earth. Dishonorable. Just because we can do something, now doesn't mean that we will bring honor to God and this is what God wants. It can be something that, well, is self-will. Something that is sinful, even. Now, then, if a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honour, sanctified, and meet what for the master's use. Means, now, you are going to be in God's will. And just now I mentioned, one of the consequences of, of failing to do God's will. You just think, this is God's will, and you go ahead and do it. You end up not being useful to God. Well, fit meet for the master's use and prepare unto every good work. Now, that is the blessing of doing God's word. See how important it is? The Christian can choose, can choose to be a vessel unto dishonor. Just because you are saved doesn't mean you will bring honor to God. Now, and also, there is a reminder, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Now, there are consequences, Christian. Please know. When the Christian thinks, well, it doesn't matter. I have all these things. I'm able to do all these things. Well, for the lack of knowledge, you don't care. You don't study God's word. You don't want to, you don't seek to know God's will. You will destroy yourself. And these people, they, they intentionally rejected knowledge. I don't need to know God's will. I can do so many things. I have my own choice. Now, I think the prevailing Christian thought today is, must we really do God's will? God saved us. And God saved us because He wants to give us what we want. He, he wants to please us to have whatever we want. Why do I need to find knowledge about His will? I don't need to. We can do otherwise. Please remember that. So one of the key takeaways up to this point is this, Christian, God's will is there. You, are, you have, even after salvation, the ability, even the propensity to just not do God's will. Please know that. So you may say, I'm living this, I'm doing this, I'm going through life normally. You just assume just because you are going through life normally like everyone else, you are doing God's will. Well, don't be foolish. You can become, you can be all the time being a, dishonor, a, honor to, a vessel to dishonor. There are consequences. What are some of them? The importance of knowing God's will. Now, failing to do God's will can result in this. Result in, a negative, result in negative personal consequences. Why is it so important? When we don't do God's will, there can be negative personal consequences. Next, it can lead to more wrong choices. Now, that is a problem. You make one decision that is not according to God's will. It will lead you to problems. And in those problems, in when you're facing those consequences as a single, as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as an elderly, because you're now facing the consequences, now you are going to need to make another choice. Now, are you going to correct your choice so that you come back to the will of God? But to do that sometimes, well, it's very painful. So you will make another decision to relieve that problem, that pain, but often, more often than not, is another wrong choice. It begins like that. Are the consequences? Now, it makes us fail to accomplish God's purpose for our lives and for the church. We, met, we read just now, if you are a vessel unto honour, unto pleasure for the Lord, well, you are a vessel fit for the Master's use. If not, you can actually fail in your purpose in life, 
Sounds scary. Very scary to me. To finish life knowing that you have been walking in your own will. Next one. Now, it can cause problems in the family and in the church. So the first three, very much to do with yourself. But please don't think you not doing God's will, not knowing God's will and doing God's will, there are no consequences to others. Well, I just suffer this consequence myself. No. It can cause problems, far-reaching problems in your own family, in the church, turmoil, unhappiness, when you refuse to do God's will. And I say again, very often just because we can and just because we are going on in something, we think that it is God's will. But look around, the problems that we are causing. Well, it can affect others' choice to do God's will as well. You can influence others. You can cause others to think it is all right not to obey God's will and to do whatever we wish to do. Parents, you have that great influence on your child. They will watch to what extent you will do God's will and they will follow. Affect the lives of those close to or those who are under your care by your choices, right? That's what I've already said. Because they will watch. And what you decide sometimes can have negative implication not only on yourself. We'll see some of those as we go along. It can create irreversible situations. So blow, please don't think, young and old alike, families, never mind, just go ahead and do this, all right? Well, just enjoy it for a while or just, just get this thing first. Well, we'll th do think about the consequences later on. But some of these consequences are irreversible. It is for life. It could be service. It could be um, some problems that will constantly be there that you can never get rid of. You can think of one. Marriage, right? Marrying the wrong person. Now, next one. Increase hindrances to God's will, even after repentance. Again, it's related. Don't think that, well, I can repent later. In some situations, yes, maybe the consequences may be um, kind of reversible. But from then on, your life, well, even that you may come back to some extent, oh, but there will be things there that will continue to be a hindrance to continue in God's will. So please know that. Knowing God's will is very important. Very, very important. Now, but is it just because of these things? What do you think? Well, you know, yeah, it is, it's quite beneficial to do God's will. I better do God's will. Better understand what it is and do His will. Is it just that? Now, the Christian must understand. We have obligations to do God's will. We are obligated to do God's will. In other words, doing God's will is not a choice. It's not for you to say, well, maybe I'll choose to, maybe I'll not. Let me have a think. It is our responsibility after salvation. Why? Because we are in the covenant of grace with God. Salvation is the covenant of grace. And in a covenant, we've always explained this again and again. All right? The peace involved in a covenant. Well, there are parties involved, you and God. There are, there's purpose involved, not your purpose. This is a suzerainty covenant. means God is the higher party. He dictates the purpose for entering into covenant with you. God decides on the purpose when he, when he brings you into covenant with him. It is not your purpose and your will. It's always his will. That is the covenant. So please know that when you get saved, you enter into covenant with God and in that covenant, God dictates. Of course, God is a loving and good, infinitely good dictator. He dictates the purpose, the will, the terms and condition. He dictates that, not you. That's why it's an obligation for us to do God's will. Once you're in the covenant, it is now your life's responsibility. Now, then here we have well, privileges and penalties, all right? Privileges and penalties. We keep reminding ourselves from the Word of God. Obedience, God says, well, um, blessings for obedience. Curses for disobedience. He made it a clear again and again at the giving of the 
commandments to remind the children of Israel, you are in covenant with me. Well, every covenant is the same on earth, right? You break the terms of the covenant, there are penalties. You keep the terms of the covenants you're in, well, you reap the privileges, you reap the benefits, right? So once you realize this, it is not so much about, well, there's benefits in keeping, um, um, walking in God's will, otherwise there are all these consequences. You have to think higher than that. God saved me. God lovingly brought me into covenant with Him. And His purpose is that I will fulfill His purposes. And He will always help me to fulfill them. And His purposes are always the very best for me now and in eternity. Right? So it's our responsibility. It's a responsibility. So teens, young ones, please don't think, when I grow up, then I think about God's will. Now I'm just a student. I will apply for any course, study anything I choose. Well, maybe when I come out and work, then I'll think about God's will. You cannot. If you're a safe person, you're immediately in the, with, in the covenant with God. That From that moment, you already must be very conscious. Do I know God's will? Do I know how to find His God's will? And am I walking in His will? You must find that. Even as a teenager, no exception. A young pre-teenager, or even elderly. Don't think elderly, I'm old already, you know. There's no need to talk about God's will. I just live day by day and do what I want to do and make choices for, for my grandchildren, myself, as I wish, you know, I'm old. No, right to the very end, you are in covenant with God. Now, next one. Now, when God says that in His covenant, you are His people, that is the covenant. You are his people. I will be a God to you now. These are the privileges, the benefits. I will be to you a God. All right? Now, not only that, God says in Exodus 13, the Lord went out before them by day in a pillar of cloud and led them the way. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people now this is a picture you are my people and when you are my people i will lead you i will always be there to lead you and you cannot say lord you can lead you can have that fire going that way but lord i i don't really need to follow you right i can go my own way have my own detours and maybe during the detour, I find there's something somewhere else I prefer to be. No, the point of this is, God, you are my people. God is saying, you are my people. Now, you follow my will. When he moves, when he moves, where he moves to, his will, you follow, all right? So, this is not just about, well, God's kindness to them, keeping them warm at night. No, this is God telling them, you must do my will. You must do my will, all right? Well, I do have to ask this question. I won't assume that everyone in this room is saved. Are you truly in the covenant of grace? You have turned to God, crying out for His mercy and forgiveness because you are a sinner and asking Him to save you and make you His people, make you part of His people. Are you in the covenant of grace? Well, are you saved? Now, to find God's will for your life, what we're going to study about is, well, you must be saved first. That is the first will that God wants you to know. He desires that you turn from your sin and be saved. Now then the privileges and penalties is clear. God says, I will be am- I, in Leviticus and I will walk among you and you will be, and will be your God and ye shall be my people in covenant. Then he said, but if you will not hearken unto me, right, then and will not do my commandments. Means you say, Lord, I am not going to do your will. You shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments. Please remember, doing God's will is not, God, I choose some parts of your will to do. Some parts, well, in this area, I intend not to follow your commandments. But do all my commandments. But if ye break my covenant, my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, burning ache, and that ye shall consume your eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat. You see, now God does promise chastisements just like he promises blessings and leading and helping, right? 
So there are privileges and there are penalties also. Now at this point, the Christian must awaken. If you have been living a life as a teenager, you just go through day by day and you just do whatever your friends do, whatever your friends chooses, whatever, uh, whatever your friends choose, whatever your parents say, well, this is good, especially if they're unbelievers. And you just follow the flow of society without ever asking, is this God's will? Am I doing God's will? I better know. I better find out. I want to be in God's will. Same for adults, same for elderly, same for families especially. Now, in fact, I would say earlier on in the slide where I spoke about the consequences. If you are a single, you're on your own and you don't have people that you're responsible for, it is already very terrible when you do, don't, when you do not do God's will. But those that have people under your care, parents, for example, husbands, for example, don't take this lightly because the penalties can extend because of you to your children because they will suffer the consequences because of you and they will learn your sin. It's a very heavy responsibility for a father, for parents. You must not take the need to understand what do I mean when I, I say I am finding God's will and I want to know God's will and I am doing God's will and how to do God's will. You have to be very serious about that because the, the implications are far more than just yourself. I hope you take this seriously. Now, Christian will do God's will. Christian is supposed to do God's will. That is what God meant. Well, Matthew 7, 21, God warns, He that doeth the will of my Father, is that so one that will enter into heaven. You want to have your own will? I, I want to believe in salvation by works. You don't want to accept God's will, God's way? His will, how to be saved, is only one way. You will not enter into the kingdom. Now, Matthew 3, 35, For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. That is how Christ views the believer, his brethren. That is how he viewed them. That is how he viewed his people. If you do his will, that is how God looks at you. Christ's likeness is doing God's will. Right? Christ's likeness is doing God's will. Christ as 100% man, holy did God's will. Well, we, we know he said in John 4, 34, Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My meat means that is the reason of his existence. He eat to do God's will. That is the reason why he eat. And that is what satisfies him. That is what gives him the energy, the, the zeal. And to finish it means to do every part of God's will. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will. You see, here is the living God, 100% man, it says, I did not come here to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. What about us? We say we want to be Christ-like. Do we have the same zeal as Christ when it comes to doing God's will? Well, doing God's will in every aspect of life, not just, it is it's not too excessive, not too demanding, but a norm. Well, until this point, is there anyone among us that say, you know, this kind of life is so extreme, you know. Do God's will in everything. And everything is about God's will. I cannot have my own will. I'm in covenant with God. The only reason for doing anything is to please God and to fulfill His will. This is, this is a very extreme Christianity. I hope none of us think that way. Because if you do, then you're simply saying that I don't want to be like Christ. I just want to be saved. You must check your salvation. Doing God's will in every aspect is the norm. You keep saying, I want to be Christ-like. You pray, I want to be Christ-like. Well, it begins here. Every aspect of God's will is your meat and you want to finish it. You will accomplish it. Students, you are going to choose some courses. Students who are graduating, you are going to um, choose some job. Is doing God's will knowing that that is God's will for you, is it something that is very prominent in your mind? Parents who have children, is it very prominent in your mind? 
I want to make sure that I do God's will and this child will do God's will in his or her life. Singles, what about you? Free and easy life. Christ-likeness is just focus on one thing. I eat to do. I eat to live to do God's will. That is all. Next. Now, then the question is this. Can we know God's will? Can you know God's will? Is it possible to know God's will? Because sometimes people feel it's not possible to know God's will. So why topics like that? Is it possible? And as a result, sometimes we just say, since it is not really possible, it is mysterious, it is unknown, no one can fully know it. Well, at the most, I can know some general idea. God wants me to pray. Not specifically, what job, whether to get married and, and, and uh, which country to live in. Yeah, it's, we will never really know. So we just go ahead and make our decisions and hope that it is God's will. Now, that is a problem when we think it is not possible to know God's will. Now, God says this in Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God, before he brought you into this world, before he even formed you in the belly, before that, not only when, oh, you're coming to this world, let me think what to do with you. No, God says he already had a plan. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Very specific. Very specific. And before thou camest forth from the womb, before you were even born, God already intended specific things for you to do. Next. Well, Paul says, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, you see, he understood the principle of Jeremiah 1.5 and called me by his grace. He knew that God will call him. And it says, to reveal his son in me that I may preach him among the heathen, not the Jews. He knew it was a specific call to a specific people, apostles to the heathen. Very specific, even before he was born. Now, what was the response of Paul? Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Meaning to say, he's not going to ask people's opinion. He only cared about one thing, God's will. But I am brought up as a Jew. I'm, I study under the greatest Jewish Pharisee. Why should I go to the heathen? I said, not for me to ask. Is that your attitude? Is God's will, is God's will uh, an, an unknowable mystery? Now, God says in his word very clearly, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that ye might be what? Filled with the knowledge of his will filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Ephesians, uh, oh yeah, let's stay with um, Galatians, Colossians first, Colossians 1.9. Now, God wants you to be, be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. If that is the case, it means that you can know God's will because God wants you to be filled with the knowledge of His will. And not only that, with all wisdom and spiritual understanding, more than just know all right? But really understand and have wisdom about it. Therefore, you can definitely know God's will. Now, having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He had purpose in Himself, God says, I make known to you. I have made known to you. God makes known His will to His people. So, a Christian must never ever think, I cannot know God's will then why would God ask you to be filled with knowledge of His will? Then why would God say, I have made known unto you the mystery of my will? It won't be a mystery to you. It will be known to you. That's why it's a mystery of His will. It is mysterious. It is difficult to know. But He said, I will make known to you. Can we know God's will? Well, furthermore, God says, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. A Christian will say, I don't think I will know God's will fully, or I know God's will. Now, I know some of you have many questions about knowing God's will. We'll cover that. Now, God says, don't be unwise. I want you to have understanding of what God's will is. Now, and then our favorite verse, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove. We are asked to prove means experience for ourselves. Know it. Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect. What? Will of God. 
We, are, we will experience it. We can know it. We can prove it for ourselves. Embrace it for ourselves. And it's a good and it is acceptable. And God's will is perfect. Perfect. Will of God. God wants you to know His will. And we can know God's will for us. All right? So I must establish these things first. Now, but God reminds us, if any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine. Do you will to do his will? Why is it that many say, I don't know God's will? Yes, I want to know God's will. I've been trying, but I don't know God's will. This can be one of the reasons. God doesn't give you the understanding of his will because he knows that you do not intend to do his will. You have no desire or intention to do his will. So God says, if any man will do his will, you will have understanding, you will have knowledge and understanding in all wisdom of his will. And if you well say, well, I like wisdom to know his will, then ask. We'll see ways to find God's will, right? In all that ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct that path. We'll see some of how God directs you into his will. Now, then we come to this. What is and, not, what is and is not finding God's will? So we have said, all right, we, it is our obligation to do God's will. There are consequences when we don't. Then we have learned that it is God's will is knowable. He wants us to know it, in fact. But, well, as we think of this now, what is, what is finding God's will? God is not. Quickly. Now, finding God's will, God reveals His will in His way and His timing. All right? God reveals His way, his will in his way and in his timing. Now, it is his will, not your will. Please remember that. And therefore, it is his way. You cannot dictate, God, I want you to show me your will this way. I will do this, I will do that, and then you show me your will, all right? No. As we see in scriptures later on, God decides how he wants to reveal his will to you. You can't dictate it. God, can you show me by open and closed doors? That kind of thing is his way. Now, his timing. It is not, Lord, I want to know it now. Lord, will I be a single for life? Will I be married later on? Lord, will I have had this health problem? Lord, will I be this or that in this world? God, please show me now. Yes, God has specific will for all of us. But if God says that it is not the time to reveal, it is his timing. All right? Well, God, can you please show me now? I want to know everything now. It is his will. It is without contradicting his precepts. When you say, God, I want to find your will. And then at the same time, you keep saying, no, I think I found God's will and this and that. But it contradicts what God says in the Bible. It is a sinful thing. God, I want to find your will. And God, I want to marry an unbeliever. And these things happen and that thing happened. So it must be, and I also like this person, it must be your will for me to marry him or her. Finding God's will will never find us in a situation where we do something that contradicts God's will. Now, finding God's will is this. Or these are the things. It is for us to walk in obedience, to walk in obligations of your covenant. That is why you find God's will. Finding God's will is to do His will as His covenant people. It is to live as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. It is... Well, many of God's will are clear and known without needing to find them. Finding God's will is not to find something big and mysterious all the time. Yes, there are some things that are mysterious, that are difficult, and we won't know maybe till later. But we must establish this. Christian, I hope that at this part you kind of wake up, all right? And note this. When you say, I want to find God's will, please don't neglect this part. God's will, many of God's will are clear and known. You don't need to find them. It's already known in the Bible. For example, keeping the Lord's day holy. Things in the Ten Commandments. All those are God's will. God says, I want you to do this. I do not want you to do this. Meaning, He's telling you His will. So the commandments are, of God are His will. For example, being in the house of prayer. No Christians should say, let me think. Let me go back and pray and read the Bible to find out if it's God's will for me to attend prayer meeting. I know other people attend, but I'm not sure if prayer meeting and Friday Bible studies are really for me. I need to go find God's will. The God, God makes it very clear. Study to show thyself approved. 
You don't have to wonder if you need to study at the opportunities that are ordained in church that you're in to study God's Word. You don't need to wonder, should I go for prayer meeting? Say, my house shall be called a house of prayer. You are part of God's people. You're part of His house. You're part of that. All right, so don't think of God's will as, will I get married? Will I be single? Will I have children? Will I not have children? Will I have cancer? Will I not have cancer? Will I be in this company? Will I not be in this company? Yes, those are, we should find out about um, God's will in some of these areas. But a Christian who just wants to keep knowing those things but ignore the known will of God is not someone who is sincere to say, I want to know God's will. Well, maybe you are ignorant of that. You must not be ignorant anymore. All right? Part of knowing God's will are all this knowing His commandments and obeying them. Simply that. Now, if this is important. It is finding God's will is to honestly seek in order to do His will. Not my will. Not my will. Sorry, ignore the extra comma there. Now, when we say we want to find God's will, we must be very honest. We must be honest to say, if I find God's will, I will submit to it, even if it is unpleasant. We must be honest that we are not just finding God's will to satisfy our curiosity. We must be honest not to see, well, if, when, when I know God's will, whether it is something that I really want to do. When we say, I want to find God's will, whether it's for yourself, your family, your child, you are saying that, Lord, I want to know because I want to do it. Because very often Christians, we don't find God's will to make His will ours. Because some of us are asking God's will to, well, God to show us His will. Actually, we are asking God to show us His will about how to best achieve our will after we have decided already. Now, this is one of the key takeaways for this section. I hope that you really pay attention and know this. When we say, I am finding God's will, one of the problems with us is this. We have already made up our minds about something. And when we say, I am finding God's will, what we are saying is this. Well, for example, I want to find out if it's God's will for me to um, buy a house. Buy a house. Buying a house is not in itself sinful. But we've already decided that we are going to buy a house. When we say, I am finding God's will, what we are saying is this, God, can you please um, um, show me your will about which bank to take loans from? God, can you show me, um, give me wisdom and show me your will in um, um, what's, the, what's the best way to negotiate with this, um, with this um, agent? What is your will? How much I should pay? God, I've already decided that my child is going to this school. You see, I'm finding God's will. So sometimes people say, I'm finding God's will. No, you've already decided that the child will go to this school. You never ask God, is this your will, God, that I should buy a house at this stage of my life? You never ask, Lord, is, is this place really where you want your child to be in, in terms of school or job? So when I say you find God's will, it's simply like, God, um, can you... We are just asking God for wisdom to direct us to the decisions that will bring us the best outcome in that will that we have chosen. God, I'm going to study this course. You, know, you don't even think, God, is this your will for me to study this course? You do not ask that question. You just go through it. God, which university to study this course? Right? Um, which country to study this course in? How to apply? Show me, O oh Lord, what is your will about how to apply? But you've already asked, you're just simply asking him to help you achieve your will and you call it, God show me your will. Right? This is one of the most dangerous things that I believe many of us, and I, in my heart, this is one of the things that I want us to realize. Because many of us may say, I'm finding God's will, I'm seeking God's will. But, but that is what we mean. All right? 
So finding God's will is not choosing to obey parts that suits us. We studied that. It is wanting to see if His will coins, not wanting to see His will happen to coincide with my will or not. Let me, I'm quite curious. You know, I already intend to do this or that, choose this or that, but I'm curious if it is God's will. You know, fortune telling? Fortune telling? We treat God and God's will like fortune telling. You know, the heathens, they go to fortune tellers. They say, can you please tell me what is our God's uh, will about this? When they say that, they basically have already decided something. I need, I need our God to tell us, well, tell me what to do in this thing. What is His will in this thing? So that I will prosper the most. I will, be, I will have fortune in this thing that I've chosen in life. That is what they mean. Now, finding God's will is not expecting the world to be happy when you choose it. Sometimes, especially when you choose something that is godly, the world will not understand. I've said this before. Finding God's will is not, I can, just because I can have the abilities, and therefore it must be God's will. And therefore, the only other will that I need to find out now, after choosing this course or this job or this thing to do, the only thing left about finding God's will is, God, can you show me where to do this? That is all. It is not going by impulses and then say it's God's will. Very dangerous things to do. Now, do you, finding God's will is not wanting God to be your personal genie. I've said that. All right? And God, you must show me in my time, my way, and for my purpose. Do you really, do you really want to find God's will? That is the question. Do you really want to find God's will? Very often, if we are only curious, number one. Number two, we are only wanting God to show us His will about something that we already decided to be in, what to do next in that thing. Do you really be honest? Now, many people make decisions in singlehood like that. They've already decided. Many people make decisions in marriage the same way. They've already decided that they're going to do this, live this way. Although the decision itself may be not sinful, but it has other implications, but they ignore it. Now, next. Some aspects of God's will will be secret, all right? So we cannot run away from this fact. As much as God wants us to know His will, God says the secret thing belongs unto the Lord, our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of His law. So we cannot say that we don't know what He wants us to do. Because whatever He wills for us to do, He promised to show us. God expects us to do what He has made known to us in the Word until the time He decides to make the unknown known. So while you do not know, there was, God says there are some things you will not know. Well, it can be you will not know at this time or you will never know. But you and I, while we do not know, all we are expected to do is keep doing what we know. The known wills of God, we are supposed to keep doing that as a single, as a family, as, a, as, a, as an elderly. Whatever you know of God's will, you keep obeying it. In God's timing, well, He may show you the next revelation of His will, or it may not be. He may not show. You just keep living as He shows you. Now then, we come to this important question. What is God's will? All right, what is God's will? Now, those of you, maybe show, show of hand, how many of you took um, Sevenfold Will of God recently? There's a FEBC course on it. Zero. No? I thought there was a course. Now, and, um, well, I know we covered this in Adelphi, in Adelphi, and, uh, well, maybe that was not offered to us. Adelphi session. So some of the Adelphi ladies, you will remember this. So please be patient. Maybe I should ask you, all right? Now, I don't have time to ask you, so you should be quite happy. Now, there are, when we say the will of God, when we say the will of God, what do we mean? What does the Bible talk about when it is about the will of God? Where, where God says, I want you to know my will. What is it? Now, it's a useful um, categorization, all right, in, in um, this article, look at the bottom, right? Sevenfold will of God in the theology of for every Christian, and there's an individual book, 
by Reverend Timothy Toh as well. It's a good way to categorize. Now, when we say God's will, there are different kinds of will in the Bible. All right, when we talk about God's will. Now, three, four big categories. The general will of God, then um, the specific will of God, then the extraordinary will of God, and the predetermined will of God. All right? Now, under general will of God, and we're going to show examples after this, right? Under the general will of God, now there is the preceptive will, precepts, we see what it is, and then there is the desiderative will. Christian, please understand this. When we do not differentiate, and the, in the Bible, what aspect of the will of God we are talking about, we can go very wrong, very, very wrong. Like the desiderative will, we end up with problems with people becoming hyper-Calvinist and so on, all right? So when you do not understand, when God says, my will, I will, I desire, there is different distinctions in the will of God, you will be in theological problem, and then you will lead to practical problems. All right, so there's preceptive will, there's a derivative will, the specific will. Now, you, you don't have to desperately copy. Pay attention, right? Because this will be uploaded. This one time, I tell you, don't need to copy, all right? We're covering a lot of details. So you just pay attention. It will be uploaded on our website. Now, then is, there is the specific directive, directive will of God. God directs. Cooperative will, punitive will, chastity will, extraordinary is permissive will. God permits something, all right? Predetermined will, God's decretive will. All right, so just know these terms first. And we want to run through them quickly now. Now, what is preceptive will? In the Bible, um, God's moral laws, statutes, and judgments, those are the will of God, the known commandments. In other words, the precepts. All right, precepts. God's revelations in, in the written word. Anything that is known, written there. Now, those are God's precepts, His statutes, His judgments, His commandments. So that's why we call it preceptive will. Now look at Psalm 119, 105. Noon, thy word is, lamp unto, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So that is how God leads us with his holy word. Bible reading, learning, meditating on his precepts and doing them, that is his preceptive will. All right? Um, for example, like um, it is God's will that you rejoice always. This is the will of God. All right? It is the will of God that, you, that men pray without ceasing. Right? That's the will of God. So these are the preceptive will, known will of God. So Christian, please know, you cannot say, I do not know God's will. There are many will of God that you already know. The problem is, we don't see them as God's will. We must do them. No point keep saying, I want to know God's will, I want to know God's will, but you ignore preceptive will. Preceptive will is the most important one for all of us. It's known to us, it will be an important guideline as we will see. So that is preceptive will, everything that God makes clear in His Word. Now, that's it, the relative will. God's goodness of grace and love and mercy towards us, He has a desire, all right? Now, this will, that's it, the relative, is, it means God desires, but it does not mean that He will will it to occur. That's why it's God's desire, but it doesn't necessarily mean He intends for it to occur, but He has a desire. For example, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? This is God's desiderative will. We'll all be saved? We know. God Himself said, not all will be saved. But said, then God, why you say that, you know, that, that um, well, you love the world and you gave your Son? Yeah, God desires that men turn to Him. But God did not say that well, His will is for all to be saved. So there's a desi derative will, all right? You must know that. You must know that. Otherwise, it leads to the, ex the other extreme. If God so loved the world and He gave His only Son, then all should be saved. Don't worry. All are going to heaven. Why? Because God already shown His will. He loved the world. You see, when you don't differentiate the will of God, you fall into errors. And then you have the hyper -Calvinist. God says, for God so loved the world. No, no, God only loved the elect. He, he doesn't love the non-elect. All the extremes. Well, quickly. Well, the Lord says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that we, we were sent to you. Now, he said, how often would I, his will, how often would I have gathered, gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her children under her wings, but ye would not. You see, God says, well, I, I, I would but you would not. And then God left them to, 
to, to, their, to, their, to, their, to their ruin, right? Desiderative will. Now, then there's directive will. We see in scriptures, directive will. Now, in the past, God appears in Theophanies, dreams and vision to directly tell people his will. Direct him directly, all right? Tell him, go here, go there, do this, say that. Well, present days, it is through the word because the word of God is complete, all right? The word of God is complete. So in the past, it's Theophanies and all that. We see in Acts 9, 6, for example. Now, Hebrews 1, 1 to 2 and 2 Peter makes it very clear. We have a more sure word of God. Now it is the word of God and you do well to take heed. Peter said, I've, I saw Christ. I met with Christ. I walked with him. I saw the transfiguration. Christ spoke to me directly, but he says that is over. And I, I'm going to die soon. I want you to know you have a better thing than what I have. So Peter here makes it clear under the working of the Holy Spirit to let us know. Please don't think that I wish God would appear to me tonight and tell me directly what course to take, what job to take and all that. Peter says, no, that is, that is not, not the case anymore. I experienced that. But I want you to know, although Christ is not with you, you have something better. You have something better, a more sure word of prophecy. It's a complete manual that had more things in there now, we often think that the prophets, we envy the prophets. God speak to them, spoke to them directly, told them directly. We envy them, but they envy us, right? Angels want to look into the things. They envy us because we have a manual that is more complete. Through the precepts of God, we actually can be more clear. For them, they wait with, well, this instruction, well, if I, this instruction, they are interpreted it correctly, but we have the whole word of God to make sure that we interpret one precept correctly, all right? So please know, this is better. Directive will. God will direct you. So God does direct us. We'll see more later on in the weeks to come. The primary way of finding God's will today is not through the charismatic um, 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 propounding dreams and visions and prophecy. No more, all right? No more. God already said in Hebrews 1 to 12. Now then, God directs through his word today, we say. Now, what about open and closed doors and providence, all right? Well, providence will be covered later, okay? But open and closed doors and all that. Well, we talk about that later. Oh, I remember what I wanted to say here. Now, because you say God directs us through his word. Now, does God direct us through open and closed doors? Does God direct us through open and closed door? Does God direct us through providence? What about that? We will study that, all right? So we, when we talk about directive, directive will, we'll study that later. Now, cooperative will, cooperative will. When we follow God's direction to the best of our ability, God will bless us and lead us. So this, direct, this cooperative will is not God cooperate with you to do what you want. Please remember that. Cooperative will means... God intends that you cooperate, right? He has a will and you submit your will to him and do it to the best of your ability and that in that, God will help you. That's the meaning, huh? Please don't misinterpret. Um, all these terms are given by, given by man, so it's the best way they can explain, but, but please don't criticize the word. It's, it's the best way to explain. So God has his will. You submit to his will and he will help you, all right, as you work with God cooper cooperatively, your human responsibility. Well, for example, marriage is an example. Example. Well, many of you knew, know this example. Um, we have Abraham asking the servant to go find a wife for his son. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. I being in the way, the Lord led me. This is how we begin to understand, hey, in the Bible, there is such a thing as a cooperative will. I being in the way. Now, he was told to go to a certain place. Abraham said, now you must make sure. And Abraham understood. They, my son should not marry the heathens. All right? So, so Abraham followed the preceptive will. You must be going to this particular people, all right? So then the servant said, I being in the way, what is it? Now the servant is saying this, he did not go somewhere else. He cooperated. He knew that that is God's will. 
with, from his, to be found from his people. He then went that way. So when he is in that way, while he being in the way, all right, not in the way means he got in God's way, all right? Well, he just obey God, God's known um, expectations, and as he is doing it, he just follow. God, you say must be if your people, I do it. I just follow you. And then God led. God led. You see, the cooperative will of God, um, the Christian must understand this. All right? And likewise, the damsel. Well, we were called the damsel, inquired at her mouth, and they called Rebecca. And then she, when she understood all this, she said, well, will you go with this man? She said, I will. All right? Cooperative will again. God was looking. And she submitted. Cooperative will. All right? Now, all this, we will slowly see how we apply it. Now, examples of cooperative will, singlehood. Not just marriage. So, you say, well, only marriage. No, singlehood as well. Now, Paul says, For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his own proper gift, one after this manner and one after another. Please know, singlehood is a gift. Paul knows he had the gift. Means that he cooperated with God. God, this is your will for me to be single, and therefore I submit to it. Paul did not say, well, you know, this is, well, not my, this is a gift to me, but I'm going to reject this gift. I want to get married. Cooperative will. So the Christian must understand that. Now, but as God hath distributed to every man. So again, it is God's will. God distributes. His, he distributes according to his own pleasure, according to his own purposes. He distributes. All right? But as God distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every man, so let him walk. So let him walk. All right? So Paul himself cooperated in the case of singlehood for himself. But he said it's not for every man. Okay? Uh, sorry for the repeat of the verse. Now, so, well, some other examples. You know this example also, well, for, for sake of time. Well, maybe... All right, so now this is where to go, for example. In a vision um, appeared to Paul in the night, there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia. See, immediately, cooperative will. They immediately submitted. Of course, during at that time, it is to dreams and vision, all right? So sometimes God will direct you. God will show you through his precept, quick, and you say, no delay, cooperative will, directly, quickly, go with that. All right? And they went. Come in. Hmm. All right? Not sure why it went to this. All right? Now, cooperative will. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Another example of cooperative will. But I do not know. I do not know what is God's will. Yet, Right? In the case of Ruth, what did she say? Thy people shall be my people and thy God my God. As a result, she said, well, I'm a believer now. I, I don't know what is her head. My husband has died, but he, she told the mother-in-law, your people will be my people and your God is my God because she has become a believer in Jehovah. So all she did was seek the kingdom of God first. Although she, the mother-in-law said, well, you don't have to. You know, you're freed. Um, the husband is dead. You're freed from this vow. You can go your way, do your own thing, whatever it is. But she just said, no, I am, a Christ, I am a believer now. Then I want to be with God's people. Just seek the kingdom of God first. And as a result of that, well, then she found, or the husband found her, all right? Then um, the next husband. So you just keep doing God's preceptive will. One of it, seek God's kingdom first. When you do that, when you cooperate in that, God will lead you. God will guide you. All right? Don't... Now, one of the things about cooperative will is to understand this and to remember this is um, learn to submit and learn to just live obediently and in that you have to believe. When you do that, God will work. When you begin to say, well, you know, I can't find it, so let me go, go to an unsound church just to find a husband, a wife. You say, God, I'm not going to cooperate in this anymore to seek your kingdom first. Now, next. What is punitive and chastitive will? The fifth one. Punitive and chastitive will. Well, God stands at an adversary to you. 
punitive punishment. The word punitive is often used for unbelievers. All right, the punitive will. God punishes unbelievers. But for the believers, we often use the word chastitive will. Chastitive will. Now, in this will, God chastises his children. And he uses this will. God's will says, I will chastise you. That is my will. This is what I will do. And this is my plan. And through the chastisement, well, is to correct the, behave, the believers as a loving father to make us chaste. That's what's called chastitive will. Make us pure. Bring us back to him. So God has this will. So Christian, you must know all this. Because later on we'll see, if, if you don't understand there's a chastitive will, problems can occur to you. We'll see afterwards. Now, well, an example of chastitive will is, well, in Balaam's case, punitive will. All right? Balaam's case, God already made his will clear repeatedly, but Balaam set his heart to fulfill his lust. And then God says, oh, go, go, go. All right? And he went to his judgment. All right? In disobedience to God. Now, then there is the permissive will. What is permissive will? God sovereignly permits evil and trouble to come that good may result. You see that as well. You see, you, it's so interesting. God has such a will. God has such a will. Example of Job 1-2, God says, And the Lord said unto, behold, unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is thy power, is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hands. You see, God permitted, God allowed Satan, and Satan went forth from God's presence. And then in Joseph's case, Genesis 5-20, Joseph said, But as for you, you thought evil against me. And God allowed them to bully Joseph, even to sell him away. But you thought evil of, against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. And God sent me before you to preserve you as a posterity in, in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. You see, how God permitted these things and brought a good end or brought glory to himself so there is such a will, Christian, because if you don't accept that there is a permissive will, you will fight against God. And you will keep saying nothing like the charismatics today. God only wants to bless you. God does not intend any negative thing to happen to you. God does not intend for you to poor, to be poor, to be sick, um, uh, to suffer. No, 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 all right? Why? Because of failure to recognize that God has such a will called the permissive will, not just a will to bless you. Now, Romans 8.28 summarizes it, and we know that all, not just some, all things work together for good to them that love God, and to them that are called according to what? His purpose. He has a purpose for you. And everything that He does, that He permits, is working out His purpose. So we have a permissive will. And then the last one. All right, the last one. Now this, is the, now, this is the large predetermined part called the decretive will, the decretive will. Well, in Westminster Confession of Faith, what is defined, um, what is decrees, what are decrees of God? The decrees of God are His eternal purpose. So, number one, His eternal purpose, not just His temporal, well, time-being purpose. It, it stretches to fulfill His eternal purpose according to the counsel of His own will. It means God's will, not you, not your will, not what you want. God decrees what he wants and what will happen. Whereby for his own glory, he has foreordained whatsoever comes to pass. You see, whatever comes to pass is his will. He ordains it for his own glory. So this is a good way to know your God. Memorize God's decrees. It exalts him and it humbles us and puts us in our place. Please know this is God's decrees. For example, um, Westminster Confession also defines God from all eternity did by his by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will. He does not need to ask you, and his will is always infinitely wiser than us. Freely and unchangeably ordain whatsoever comes to pass. So God's decretive will is whatever he decrees, they will come to pass. Yet, so as thereby neither is God the author of sin, nor is violence offered to the will of creatures, nor is the liberty or contingency of the second cause taken away, but rather established. Now what is he saying? God decrees all things, and all things will come to pass. Whatever God decrees will occur. But it does not mean that God made you a robot, a, like a robot. 
that you don't have a choice. You will always end up, well, God said, I want this to happen. He forces you to do it. No. You see, in God, in His infinite wisdom and His sovereign control, now, He does not take away your, uh, your will. Neither is the author of sin. Whenever you sin, whenever you do something, um, um, it is your will and your sin. But God will always bring His will to pass. All right? Now, an example, Example of these areas are predestination of the elect, Judas betraying Christ. Judas, God intended for Judas to betray Christ. God intended for Christ to die. But when Judas betrayed Christ, it was out of Judas' own wicked heart. All right, and so on and so on. Now, so, well, then how this is brought together? Well, all other aspects of God's will are energized by this decretive will. Romans 8, 28 is a good description. You see, whatever God wills will come to pass. And whatever man does in between, all right, you may think that you are, you can, you can well, thwart God's will. You just, you will never succeed. God's will will always be done. Now, I want to ask you a question and you think about this and some of you may know the answer already and we answer next week. So if that is the case, can I walk out of God's will? Can I walk out of God's will? Because God's, God's will will always be done, right? Decretive will. Can I walk out of God's will? And this God, decretive will, as described in this, in this is like that mechanism behind the clock. Can I walk out of God's will? Well, if God's will will always be done, then why do I worry? Why do I need to study this? It will always be done. Well, think about that. We'll answer it. See, like these people in Acts 20, Acts 2, 23, him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God. It's God that determined and God will that Christ will be delivered. But he says on the human part, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified them. But when you crucify Christ, it is on you. It's your own wicked hand, your own wicked heart that wants to do it. Sevenfold will of God, all right? Um, the sevenfold will description is taken from, from this uh, book. You can um, go read it. But now, how are we, are we to think about all this? So having, having, th having thought about all this, having understood very briefly the seven aspects of God's will in the Bible, we know that when God says, my will, and, and so on, God is not willing that any should perish. For example, is everyone not going to perish? Because the Bible says he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's one will that doesn't get done, right? It's his desiderative will in that sense. So, now, what are we thinking of when we say, I want to know God's will? Because there are sevenfold will. What are you talking about? When we say, is it God's will for me to take this job? Is it God's will for me to be single or married? Should I marry this person? Well, should I make this purchase and so on? Now, is it God's will? We have to know what we are talking about and where we are in on this clock, all right? On this surface, on the face of this clock. Where are you in there? Which part of God's will are you in there? So, which of God's will are we referring to? Which of God's will are we referring to? Now, Paul said, later we'll visit this. Well, Paul said that, well, he will not be persuaded to do otherwise and say, the will of the Lord be done. What was Paul talking about? Which will was Paul talking about? When you say, let God's will be done, I am doing God's will. I am in God's will. I am not in God's will, even. Right? What are you talking about? So, this is just to show you. Please eyeball it, the sevenfold will. Have an idea about it, because now we are going to go to put this thing together. We've, we've covered the theory, so to speak. All right? We covered the theory, so to speak. Uh, this whole thing comes together, well, one way to describe it is like this clock, all right? Moving through the phase, and there's the directive, di um, the decretive will uh, moving the mechanism. But maybe I use this to put things together to help you see, all right? To help you see. Well, God's decretive will um, is like, kind of like a runway. Well, first, first and f not, not that. God this, God's decretive will is this cloud, right? this thing that is above us, that, 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 over, that overarches everything that we do. All right? So that is God's decretive will. Everything is under God's decretive will. 
in that sense. Now, then, remember we studied about the covenantal con conditions. It's the preceptive will. God gives us commandments, precepts. So in that, it's a light to our feet. I want to know God's will, you say. I want to find God's will. How do you find God's will? The clear thing to go to first and foremost is His preceptive will, the Word of God, the principles and the known commandments in the Word of God. So it's like this aeroplane trying to take off, all right? You, this aeroplane will either end up at the end, all right, at the right-hand side end, which the runway is actually blocked. Actually, this happened to one of the airlines um, not too many, you know, many years back. Right, the airline, the pilot was was dry, was was um, was going forward, 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 but he didn't see about those red lights that that were in front of him. He that was supposed to detour. He was supposed to follow the lights and detour, but he missed it, and he went. And as he was taking off, he crashed into these barriers, and it was a major, massive accident. All right. So now, trying to use this to help you understand God's will, God's Preceptive will is the runway light for you, all right? You have the guiding lights, left and right. Don't go left, out of the left. Don't go out of the right. And then there's the center line, the very clear one. You stick to it, the preceptive will. Now, then you must be on the watch out, on the watch out. Now, sometimes there is a turn. You need to follow. Now, now the precept in this situation, the preceptive will say, go right, all right? Do this. Don't do this. You must be alert and now start following the green light. Otherwise, you will get in trouble. But if you follow the green light, you will keep walking in His covenantal promises. All right? So His directive will, the green light, then you, call, you, you, walk in, you, you follow in cooperative will. All right? It says turn, you turn. All right? And then you will find that he will lead you in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. There will be success. But if you either don't bother about God's will or resist God's will, well, the light is going that way, but I like to go forward my own way. You will inevitably turn into the covenantal penalties, the chastative will. All right? When you go against thou shalt not um, and thou shalt, you don't obey. Right, so give you, to give you a picture. But I know some of you still wonder, how does this whole picture come together? And how, how is it linked um, to specific things in my life, general things in my life? Well, maybe let me do this now. Let me try and put this together, all right? By the way, this week, we are going to establish all these principles Next week, we will apply them, all right? So, know it well, because next week, I will ask you, how, how, in this situation, what do you do? And so on, all right? God willing, we have time for that. I hope we do. Now, let me try and um, give you an understanding about when you say, I'm finding God's will for myself, for my family, for my child. Now, first and foremost, I want to do this. All right? Now, this is eternity. Eternity forever and ever, all right? In infinite, eternity, forever and ever. And now, there is the Bema Seat Judgment for the believers. Bema Seat Judgment, meaning how you live your life, whether you walked in God's will, did His will, all, all, the, other, all the aspects we've learned of His will, there will be a judgment day for that. Either you suffer loss, God does say that you will suffer loss, not that your soul will go to hell, but because you did not walk in God's will, there will be losses. Christians, understand this. The will of... Uh, now, the will of God is always for your eternal benefit. Always. Satan will want you to think otherwise. Do this, choose this, be this is better. But whatever God wills for you, He, before you were born into this world, intended that you do this, be this, and then in eternity, you will have this eternal joy, eternal glory, eternal um, rewards, and you will have no regrets because you walked according to His desired will. All right? Please know that. 
Now, I said this to help you realize if I don't walk in God's will, however attractive and beneficial I think it is to do my own will, you are going to suffer an eternal loss. I want to set that burning platform, an eternal loss. Not loss of soul if you're truly saved, but you will always look back and kick yourself and wish that you weren't so stubborn. There will be that, all right? Now, then we come to this. Now, um... Let me see what's the best way to do this. Now, that is the general will of God. General will, well, for example, the preceptive will. All the known things. Can you think of some general will? For example, holiness. Now, it is God's will for you to be holy. It is God's will for you to pray without ceasing. It is God's will for you to study the word. It is God's will for you to, what else? To be rejoicing always. All right? These are known will of God. Known will of God. And then there are the specific will. The specific will. Can you think of specific will? For example, it is, for example, marriage or singlehood. They're specifically to you. Not, everyone, not, not for everyone. We read that just now. Singlehood is not for everyone. Marriage is also not for everyone. Very specific to you. Well, who you marry, right? Um, what country you live in. And, and so on, right? So, some are very specific that is specific, personal to you. God has them for you. And we read, those, we read those scriptures also. Before you were born, when you're separated from the womb, all those, God already had plans for you, specifically. Now, so specific will. Now, so he, here you are. Here you are, as you live your life. As a student, as an adult, um, as an elderly, here you are. Now, let me erase this first, all right? So you know that already. Okay, best I can do. Now, God wants you to do His will, right? Do His will. And then so that you're going to be my seat, um, judgment and all that, all is good if you do His will. Now, but the problem is we... We get distracted. We want to. We get um, tempted by our lust. Now, what is going to happen is kind of like that. Maybe I use a different color. All right, it's kind of like that. You can see, right? Now, what am I? What am I drawing? Um, I'm saying that this straight line is well. If we just obey, but sometimes we go off. We go off. Now, how does the sevenfold will of God come in? God will use his preceptive will. Oh, this, this is not good. Now, God will use his preceptive will to bring you back, to bring you back to this straight line. So, you come for Bible studies, and then you realize I'm walking off because I'm disobeying in this. A verse comes to you when you're doing your Bible, when you're Bible, doing your Bible reading or FEBC course. God uses his preceptive will to bring you all right, to bring you back on track. And then, or God can also use his um, directive will. All right, directive will. Well, some things like, if any man love father and mother more than me, is not worthy of me, it can be a directive will. Because, for example, you are going to make a decision based on your father and mother. But that decision would mean that you would not do God's will. Then you begin to realize that, hang on, God is using this to direct my heart. I am honoring men before him. So God directs, all right? So God brings you back again. God can use his directive will, for example. Then God will remind you of cooperative will. That as you respond to his preceptive and directive will, then you begin to now obey him. Say, Lord, give me strength. I will do this, although this is not something that I like to do or want to choose. But God, I will enter into cooperative will, all right? And you help me, all right? So God uses that. Um, but some of us refuse, refuse to, to submit, and we want to go our own way. God also uses his what? Maybe I try. Uses his, uh, let me ask, 
Um, Jennifer, what will? Chastative will. God will also use his chastative will. So God will bring maybe certain calamities, certain problems, certain roadblocks and all, and you find, oh, you know, illnesses even, then God uses his chastity field, then in your heart you will know the Holy Spirit will convict you. Then you again come back to the blue line. All right? Um, and sometimes God even uses his permissive will. He allows certain difficulties in your life. And he knows that if he allows that sickness in your life, he allows that um, um, loss in your life, you would draw close to him. Without those problems, you would go astray. So God permits certain things to happen to you. So God uses um, these, these areas of his will. Now, when the Christian began to live his life, say, I want to find God's will. I want to live God's will. You must be aware of, well, which stage or what will of God you are talking about, or what will of God that God is using to help you to, to come back on track. All right? So this is how you begin to see the different will of God working in your life, and then you recognize it, and then you respond, right? Now, but then there are specific will, the same principle, under specific will, we will go um, astray a bit, and then God will direct us back using PDCCP, all right? Using all this, and direct us back, and, and all the way to we, um, to we, Go to the Bima seat. Now, the ideal situation for the Christian, having understood all this, different aspect of the will of God that God needs to use, the ideal state is, of course, of course what? Stay obedient, on track, submissive, honest, all the way. All right? That's the best. And all the way till we meet the Lord. Now, one of the other issues that come is this. Now, maybe I draw another specific view, all right? Maybe another specific view. Whatever it is that is for your life and you know it. Now, what can happen is this. The Christian can, well, as you go, then you realize that it's God's will. God doesn't want you to take this course, marry this person, um, uh, do this or go there, or whatever it is. What will happen is this. Then there we have something that is also, the Bible talks about self-will. It's called stubbornness. Self-will. You will hit self-will. All right? And then, now, in the midst of it, God keeps working at you. But self-will is so strong in you and you just don't want to do God's will. Now, what will happen is this. You're going to be... What do you think will happen? Well, let me use this color. No matter what God used, PDC, CP, because you don't want to, this, this self-will will shunt you off. Right? Will shunt you off. And you will miss this specific will. You just go past it. Because you want to do your own will. So you hit this wall, and then you just bounce off. Right? You bounce off. Few things happen. Number one, well, you don't do God's will. So when you meet him at your Bima seat, you will notice that this whole thing did not occur in your life. You chose to do something else. All right? SW. You chose to do self-will instead whether it's a cause of study, whether it is, as, as a result, a cause of job, whether it is a marriage, singlehood, whatever it is, or some choices you make for your children as well. So now you miss this part. Now the thing is this, let me ask you. What is happening in your life? There is a few things that we must be very conscious of now that we understand these different aspects of God's will and all of it happening at the same time. Now, while you are here, you notice that there are still the blue lines on top. So maybe, for example, we say this blue line is maybe um, whatever it is that you can think of, all right? Um, maybe marriage. Oh, no, not red. All right, red is confusing to you. 
Well, maybe about... He doesn't want to change colour, all right? Maybe our marriage. Well, you obeyed him. So, um, you married and you also married... No, actually, this is not a good example. Maybe job, all right? Okay, maybe, maybe a specific job. So, you, you were obedient. You, you were wanting to go one way and then you realise it is not God's will and then you obeyed him. You stayed in the job, all right? Um, so, you are in this... In this, in this specific will of God. That is good. That is good. But then, along the way, um, you meet someone. You like the person, all right? Um, and you ignored God's will, and you went ahead and married the person. Then you end up in this self-will, all right? Now, but you are still in this job, all right? And still maybe some other specific area of life. Um, you are still, um, for example, serving the Lord, all right, in, in certain ministry. But this person was not God's will for you. But you went ahead. But what I'm trying to say is, is please don't be ignorant that because other areas are going well, well, in the job and so on, or, or even if it's, well, if it's marriage, say this marriage, you, you, you got married to the right person and even, all right? But something in the marriage that you're supposed to do, you're disobedient with. But just because, well, I did this, I did this, right? Don't make this right. What I'm trying to say is, by the grace and mercy of God now, when you look at a certain point in your life, a certain instance in your life, you may have certain things you are walking in God's perceptive will, you're walking in God's specific will, general will, and so on, but don't think that then all is fine. Right? Well, of course, marriage you can't reverse. It can be something in marriage. And you still don't want to disobey, but you see everything else is going fine, so you just ignore this part. What I'm trying to help you to understand is the different will of God must make you conscious that I can be in one area that is almost some other areas that disobeying, but other areas I'm obeying, it must not make me feel comfortable. The Christian must always fix whatever is fixable, all right? And repent and return. And return to do God's specific will. You must. So once you understand the various aspects of God's will, this is fine, this is fine, but I must not lull myself into thinking all is fine. I must come back, all right? Because along the way, God will continue. God will continue. And God's aim using PDC, CP, is to make you come back this way and then to be my seat with no regrets. That is the key thing. Now, a few things I want to say, a few things I want to say before I end for tonight. Now, when you realize this, remember in the beginning we said, don't be so foolish to think that I can ignore God's will and, well, maybe, maybe um, things will be fine, just take the risk. Some consequences are irreversible. Irreversible. Some of this, you have to live with the consequences for life. Don't think that it's always possible to come back here and then go here. Some things, some things are, are permanently lost. Please know that. That is why it's important to understand the sevenfold will. When God uses PD, oh, let's use screen. When God uses PDC, CP, when you notice this will in your life, quickly turn back. Before you do not know when, it may become a permanent change that is irreversible. Well, marriage is one of it, for example. Now, the second thing I want to say in our understanding, having understood this, is this. Now, don't, don't resist the will of God. Sorry, don't resist the chastitive will. Don't resist the chastitive will of God. What do I mean? Now, if you now that you realize there is such a thing as a chastitive will, a chastitive will, it is very good 
very important. I would say very good. Well, it's in that situation, it is not a good situation for you, but you must understand this and therefore it will still help you. What do I mean? When you recognize I am in God's chastity field and this situation is permanent, I cannot serve in this anymore or I cannot um, um, do that anymore. It, it is for life. Don't resist chastity field. Submit to it. Submit to it. And just continue to live everything else from then on to obey the Lord and bear with these consequences instead of fighting. Because sometimes people not understanding that it's a chastity view and some consequences are permanent. What they do is this. For example, they're not allowed to serve, well, maybe for pastors, all right? Or any, anyone in church as well. They're not allowed to serve in certain ministries anymore. They're not allowed to serve anymore. When they become, when they resist, what they do is this, they politic, they fight, they complain, why, 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 why? But actually, as long as they live obediently, God will still use them. But because they don't understand there's a thing of chastity will, they just feel that, well, the church is bullying them, the church is, and all that. No, there is a chastity consequence that God works through that as well. Just continue to serve humbly, continue to obey um, obediently. Same for teens, right? If you know that some things you've done, and now it is always a mark on you. Instead of getting angry at, at the people that, that chastise you and all that, submit and continue on, all right? Continue on in all other areas and even in this matter to just continue to be obedient while you submit to God's chastity field. All right, so the, the beauty of beginning to understand the various aspects will help you to see where you are in this picture whether it's on the surface of the clock or this picture, and be conscious of what will you are in at that point of time. Am I in God's chastity field? Am I needing to now enter into cooperative will? Well, God is using His pre uh, preceptive will to direct me as well. I must respond, all right? Well, why, is th why did I just discover that this sickness will be with me for life? Huh, now I understand there is a thing called permissive will. And when I am in permissive will, I walk in cooperative will, right? And when I do that, I won't enter into chastity will. And instead, as I keep following his pre preceptive will and his directive will, well, I will keep walking well, right? So when we say I'm finding God's will, we must be honest. And we must be also conscious of what is happening. Otherwise, we will, just, we will just throw our hands up, give up, or get discouraged, or resist the will of God. All right? So, well, some of the things that we will cover next week, God willing, well, is well, some of the things like, you wonder, can I walk out of God's will? Um, what do I do if I walk out of God's will? What can I do? Um, maybe I ask you things like, just because I like someone and the person likes me back, <laughs> and the person likes me back, all right, then it must be God's will. Just because, well, I don't like to do this, oh, then it must be God's will. Or just because I like it, is it God's will? And so on and so forth, all right? So now we begin to apply some of this will of God that we learn um, to answer some of these questions. Let's ask God to help us to learn this and to come back next week to learn more. Let's pray. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts, uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from